Dear friends, did Hebrew God Yahweh have a wife? Was there a time when the Hebrew people worshipped a divine couple, God Yahweh and Goddess Asherah? If you read only the Bible, you might think those are silly and even offensive questions. But not so if you consider the full picture. There are a number of indications that this was exactly the case. Deep in the Sinai Peninsula, in a place called Kuntilet Ajrut, on the walls and on the pottery of that place, was a number of religious inscriptions with prayers, best wishes and blessings in the name of Yahweh and his Asherah. And there were also drawings further supporting these religious interpretations. Now, scholars argue about the exact purpose of that place. The religious graffiti and some other artifacts might indicate it was a wilderness shrine for desert nomads. Or based on its solid structure, it might be a small detached garrison protecting otherwise desolate stretch of the road. And it could also be a caravanserai, a stop and watering place just off the main north-south trading road from Gulf of Aqaba to Mediterranean shore. Or it could be all those things together. All three functions are easily mutually compatible. Just take it from our own experience. In desolate places, people tend to gravitate together. And if you travel through the empty expanses of New Mexico or Nevada, you can easily come across a gas station, police outpost, and small chapel catering together and side by side for travelers' elemental needs of sustenance, safety, and spirituality. And thus, from graffiti written and drawn by a number of ancient travelers in the Sinai Peninsula, we realize that the Bible represents an official orthodox, and if you wish, a highbrow religion while regular folks along the ancient roads had their own ideas, thoughts, and hopes, their own religion. And traveling through the vast spaces of dangerous wilderness, they put their trust in the divine couple, Yahweh and his Asherah. And that is something you might not know about the Bible, and the biblical times. And there is another lesson specifically for religious experts. While they write their books, people draw their faith in graffiti. People have always believed what they wanted. And I found it profoundly humbling. Every rabbi and every pastor should take it to their heart and remember it. Dear friends, in one of our earlier episodes of Something You Might Not Know About the Bible, we asked the question whether the Hebrew god Yahweh ever had a wife. And based on archaeological discovery in Sinai Peninsula, in Kuntilet Ajrut, we answered affirmatively. In the ancient caravan stop, deep in Sinai, archaeologists found blessing in the name of Yahweh and his Asherah. But Kuntilet Ajrut is far away from population centers. Who knows how it might be influenced by international travelers and their heterodox beliefs. If inscription in Sinai are somehow distant, Today, I want to bring it much closer to biblical home, to Kirbet el Kom, right between ancient Judean cities of Hebron and Lachish. 
1967 a tomb was discovered and in it an ancient inscription in old Hebrew script dated roughly to the end of the 8th century. That was a time of expansion of Assyrian Empire. And biblically speaking, it was the time of the oldest Hebrew prophets. And that inscription went like this. Inscription of the Honorable Uriyahu. Blessed be Uriyahu by Yahweh, and from his enemies be saved for the sake of Asherah. Written by Abiyahu. And two more broken lines, both mentioning goddess Asherah. So what can we discern from this inscription? In this case, we are in the economic center of Judea, between two important cities. Also, this is inscription in a tomb, which is a sign of certain prosperity. Only wealthier families could afford a large tomb cut out of rock. Thirdly, a person is buried there with an honorific title, translated differently as prosperous or honorable. Fourthly, two persons are mentioned there with beautiful theomorphic, it means based upon uh, divine name, theomorphic Yahvistic names. Uriyahu can be translated as Yahweh is light, and Abiyahu can be translated as Yahweh is father. They are seeking blessing of Yahweh and protection of Asherah. And finally, there is also the depiction of an hand around and in between that inscription, blessing and protecting hand, probably blessing and protecting the deceased, Uriahu. So here we have Judean nobleman with beautiful Yahvistic name in a tomb inscription made by another person with a beautiful Yahvistic name, pronouncing blessing by Yahweh and protection by Asherah. Then if you read the Bible superficially, something like that should not happen, would be an arch anathema. But reality was clearly more complex. Now we have evidence from Judea that there was a time when Yahweh and Asherah were a divine couple blessing and protecting their devotees together. And that is something you might not know about the Bible. And sometime soon, I hope to look with you directly into the Bible. And even though it was thoroughly edited, sanitized, and even religiously censored, I am convinced that we can still find some traces of Yahweh and Asherah, or Yahweh's wife, directly there in the biblical text. Dear friends, this is our third episode asking, did Hebrew God Yahweh have a wife? Was there a time when Hebrew people worshipped a divine couple, God Yahweh and Goddess Asherah? In the first episode, we looked into an archaeological discoveries in a caravan stop in Kutilet Ajrud in the Sinai Peninsula. Second episode was about a tomb in Kirbet El Qom in Judea. Both were Iron Ages archaeological locations and finds. Today we will look into the Hebrew Bible itself. And if you read the Bible superficially, like the Christians as well as Jewish fundamentalists do, the image looks straightforward. The cult of Asherah was corruption of the only true religion 
It was a repugnant idolatry and a pagan abomination. Only naive and unfaithful allowed themselves to be seduced by it. The faithful had to reject it completely and without any reservations. Biblical revulsion over goddess Asherah went so far that she was almost completely eliminated from the biblical text. Even using grammar, attaching uh, definite articles, possessive suffixes, and some strange plurals, Asherah was turned from a goddess into a mere object, most likely a symbolical representation of a tree. And this impotent object was further attacked and rejected to be completely eliminated, cut off, burned and destroyed. But Goddess Asherah is still present in the Bible and even as a partner of God Yahweh, of course, in disguise. There is a quite common understanding among the West Semitic scholars that Lady Wisdom, in the first chapters of the Book of Proverbs, is in reality a surrogate name for the goddess Asherah. I heard it decades ago in Prague when I studied in Edinburgh. And here in America, for instance, Mark Smith writes about it. The reality is quite clear if you are familiar with ancient Near East mythology and iconography. For instance, Lady Wisdom is described using an iconic image of Asherah as a tree feeding her devotees in Proverb 8. She is described as a tree whose fruit is better than gold or silver. Text was little obscured in editing process and the name of the goddess was substituted to appease probably religious zealots. But just listen to this lovely hymn from the Proverbs 8 in my translation where I gently highlighted certain intuitive aspects of this text. It's Proverbs 8, 22 through 31, and it is a song of Lady Wisdom. Yahweh has acquired me even before his oldest works. At the beginning I was installed, well before the beginning of the earth. There were no oceans, and I was to give birth. Even before the springs broke with water, before mountains were planted, before the first hill appeared, I was to give birth. Before he had made the earth with its borders, before the first lumps of dry land emerged, while he was fixing of the heavens above, I was. In his cutting of the arch of horizon above the face of the sea, in the hanging up of clouds above, in his pushing up the fountain springs from below, in his setting of limits to the waters, so that they would never transgress his commands, in his establishing the pillars of the earth. In all of this, I stood faithfully by his side. Day after day, I was the one of his delight, his purest joy at all times. I gave him joy in a world of land and delight in humankind. What a beautiful poetical version of creation story. But it is not just any creation story. The Hebrew text is heavy with childbearing allusions and vocabulary. 
very specific word is there used for being born or giving birth. It's root havala, word for birth pangs. And there are other allusions, breaking of water, for instance, emergence of the first lump, pushing up mountains, cutting of the horizon, and giving to the husband the joy of children. I cannot help it. This is beautiful example of creation by procreation. A divine couple is giving birth to the world and humankind. In this case, explicitly Yahweh and Lady Wisdom. And before censorship, very likely Yahweh and Asherah. And originally, it was most likely God El and Asherah. And there is beautiful poem here of Yahweh and his wife right under our noses. And that is something you might not know about the Bible. And eventually, I would like to talk also, maybe in the next episode, about the theological consequences of all of this beautiful and deep theological poetry and thinking.